I'm back again uh, with advancing with watercolor and uh, today I want to talk about um, how an artist can interpret the scene and turn it into something unique, something different than what might be obvious, what might be commonplace. And um, this is the last day I'm in New York and I'm in the studio and I'm looking at some images from the past day when we were in near the Brooklyn Bridge. Um, outside, it's pouring rain. Uh, we had a beautiful day yesterday. Today is the complete opposite. Everybody's gone home. There's a little sad feeling uh, when that happens. So I want to do a painting of uh, the Brooklyn Bridge, but I want to do my own interpretation and maybe make this feel like a rainy day, kind of a quiet rainy day scene. So I'll be using a the image that you see in the upper right hand corner is sort of my reference, well very much my reference. And what I like about this image is the, the, the scale of the Brooklyn Bridge as you see it in the background. I like the cars jostling in the foreground and I like the signage that kind of wanders through the middle of the scene. So what I'm doing is I'm working maybe back to front. I'm using a very limited palette, I think maybe just neutral tint, which is a black, basically, that doesn't have any warmth or coolness. And uh, it's indicative of a, this, this sort of restriction in color helps to emphasize the mood of the day, or let's say the internal mood that I have as uh, as I'm reflecting on the workshop and um, naturally missing people and uh, missing the, the camaraderie that we had. But I'm, I'm still in love with my motif. I'm still in love with uh, New York City and in particular some of the views we had of the bridges. What you see me doing is building up this light mid-tone. I have, I've done practically nothing in the sky um, and I'm relating this first application, which is a very light gray, to that. I'm using the sky as, uh, the white paper as the sky, and so the first tones are very light, and I'm trying to make them feel like they're, these columns are receding, that the bridge is, is disappearing into the distance, but if you'll have a closer look, you'll see I'm leaving little spots of white here and there. I'm using some hard edges, but a lot of broken edges. I feel this uh, technique or this um, mindset as you're working helps to relate your the, the subject or the objects that you're painting to a sense of atmosphere, to a feeling of atmosphere when you let uh, the edges be broken or in or soft, you can generate a stronger feeling of atmosphere or even air. Let's just call it air. So these things that I'm painting now, some signage, but uh, an indication of the on-ramps and the roads that lead underneath and to the Brooklyn Bridge. Uh, rainy day, as they come closer, I'm getting stronger um, values, darker values, and stronger accents. My focal point will be um, towards the end of the painting when I identify a few cars that are being reflected into the wet pavement as well as any lights that they have. Uh, my, my thought is to make that a, a point of emphasis in the painting. So largely what I'm doing now is setting the stage and I'm doing it in a very loose and free manner. I haven't painted this particular perspective, but I have a pretty clear idea of what I want to do even before starting it. And that is to evoke a feeling of a rainy day, of uh, the traffic um, leaving New York on a rainy day. So naturally when you're you're working on this image, there's a lot of imagination at work. If you look at the upper right hand image, you might be confused how I um, am perceiving this in my mind's eye or how I'm um, choosing to represent some things and choosing to neglect other things. 
probably a lot of what I'm doing is based on experience, uh, things that I've done which are similar in the past. Um, if you know my work, you know that I do enjoy painting rainy day scenes. Uh, there's something about it that excites me as, as an artist and also touches, uh, I don't know, that uh, kind of sweet sadness that uh, a rainy day evokes. A little bit of loneliness, a little bit of longing. Even, I believe that can be captured or represented in in our artwork. Uh, we can exaggerate that and we can <clears throat> evoke that in, in uh, any sort of image, even a, the image of a, of a bridge and a, a city scene can evoke that, at least for me. So you see me working in the foreground now, sort of with a wet-on-wet wet application. Most of what I've been doing to this point has been dry brush and, and um, focused on some of the angles of the painting, the, the signage in the background, the on-ramp, broken edges here and there, certainly the enormous uh, gates of the Brooklyn Bridge looming in the distance are an important part of this motif. And now I'm doing the, I'm complementing all that dry work and all those broken edges with some soft edges uh, in the reflection of cars, in the reflections of signage or this or that. And at this point, I'm thinking very much as a designer trying to arrange these tones in a pleasing manner, not just um, where they logically would go, but uh, in a pleasing manner so that the eye uh, travels through the painting and and finds a focal point and then moves through the painting again. Um, and all this is being done without much thought, just based on what I'm observing and what's in my mind's eye. So I know that I, a few things that I want to do, but I'm very much uh, listen to the watercolor, listen, hmm, that sounds funny, I know listen to the watercolor. It's not making any sound, but it is talking. It is, it is saying something to me as I paint it. And, uh, and I'm trying to be sensitive to that and regard that as an important um, influence. And at this point, I'm, I'm working with a much darker pigment and slowly building up uh, the darks in the painting. Uh, careful to keep you know, some of the wet edges, um, careful to relate now these dark passages. I need to extend the darks through the painting, through the middle of the painting to create a, a feeling of unity. Right now, uh, only the car, the reflection of the car is, is very dark and it's standing out a little too much. So. My feeling is I have to bring in some darks either into the signage or to adjacent cars or uh, into the foreground at some point, maybe darken up the wash in the foreground so that it doesn't feel too isolated. And this way of working is very comfortable, um, working on dry paper, thinking about mm, rough edges and uh, connecting mid-tones and so on. I'm not even looking at the photograph at this point and simply looking at the painting and uh, listening to my uh, sort of my inner voice telling me, oh, this, uh, we don't need to do too much here because uh, it's a soft, misty, rainy day. We can be very evocative and say, say what we want to say with uh, much less detail, much less reference to nature, and, uh, and try to balance the painting. Once the image is fairly stable, uh, I should say fairly <clears throat> complete, in other words, everything is on the stage and, um, and placed, then I feel I need to relate things or correct things. In this case, I'm going to be correcting the foreground, which I placed earlier but has dried much paler 
and you can see I'm going at the foreground uh, with soft edges, very wet edges, and connecting that tone of the car that's closest to us. Um, I've used a darker, richer application in the foreground to enhance the feeling of the reflective quality in a wet road and also visually to stabilize that reflection of the cars, um, the left hand side and the, the central car, so that they feel mm, connected and not loose uh, in the painting. And my intention is in the final edits to add some highlights uh, using a white paint to create the headlights of this car and break up this large dark in a positive way. But the painting really is nearly finished. You can see that the, uh, the feeling that I set out to create, which is this misty, rainy, rainy day coming out of the city, going into the city, I guess it really doesn't matter, uh, is, is there. And right now I'm just adding a few details and uh, correcting things that I know will improve the painting. But um, I don't want to be too, I don't want to go too far in that direction. I want to keep it evocative. I want to let the I want to encourage the viewer's imagination to sort of finish the painting. So a lot of the detail work in the car, in the uh, various pieces of architecture behind the cars, uh, in the signage is left unfinished so that the viewer can finish the painting. Uh, you see now how that uh, front wash is dried in a very pleasing manner and the highlights uh, just ignite that, that central area and bring it forward. At the same time this car comes forward, it feels a little animated. Why is that? If you notice the headlights, I, I used a bit of white paint, but I drag my finger over that headlight so that it appears to be uh, blurry, or in this case, it's creating a feeling of animation. And animation, to bring animation to a two-dimensional painting of a uh, complex scene is very stimulating. It really uh, brings the audience even closer to that sensation that they're seeing this scene as I want them to see it, as, as I felt it, uh, a, a rainy day leaving the city. I hope it was uh, educational for you. It was, a, it was an important piece for me to do this at the end of the workshop, the, the six-day workshop in New York City. I'll be going back in the fall and uh, advertising that on the website soon. You can see a list of materials if you read the description. This was done with a single color on a rough paper, Arches 140 rough, but you can see my materials list if you look in the description. You can also see <clears throat> um, other content that came out of this New York trip if you visit my website.